Hi, this is the Digital Reader, and today I'm going to be talking about two pieces of software. One is for how I organize my whole book collection and how I kind of do big picture things, and the other is an app that I have that helps me track my reading for the year and my reading goals for the year. So the first uh, the first app I want to talk about is one you've seen every video, and that is the app I use to store, organize my books, and I also use it to do conversions. I use it, it's, it's kind of a jack of all trades, but I use it for a lot of stuff, and the app is called Calibre. Um, Calibre is a free app, it's open source, and I've been using Calibre since 2010. Uh, first thing I'd like to say is shout out to Microsoft Excel because Microsoft Excel is just an incredible program and I say that because everybody starts off with an Excel spreadsheet to track what they're doing and before I got Calibre I had an Excel, spree that, an Excel spreadsheet I used to track my list of books and what I read. But once I got Calibre, I didn't go back. Calibre, it's open source, it's free, you can donate, and it's brought me so much utility that since I've had Calibre, I've donated probably about $100 to them. I'm um, just showing you the website for Calibre now. Um, this is their website. They have an app for Mac, they have an app for PC, and they have a video demo. I've linked all that in the descriptions in case you want to look at it. I'm just going to dive into Calibre now and kind of just kind of show you some basic stuff that it does, but it does just about everything. So, like I said, you've been seeing Calibre in all of my videos because this is what you're looking at now is Calibre. Calibre basically creates a folder and you can go to Calibre when you open it up and you can go to add books and any book you, you add to Calibre it basically puts in that folder it organizes it, it puts it in its own set of folders by author um, it, col it collects all the, the metadata and everything it just does so much stuff so I'm just going to kind of do a quick overview of some of the stuff that Calibre does the first thing that I should note with Calibre is you can pull up different views I like to use this view when I'm doing my videos because, you know, book covers are pretty. Um, but generally when I'm using Calibre, they have a layout option and this is the cover grid. But the way I usually use Calibre is I do a list of information and then I have on my left hand side a little pane that shows the current book that I'm on. Calibre also has a view option where you can kind of look at stuff just kind of in a cover browser like this where you can just kind of go from book to book to book like this and then you pull it down and bam. This is the view that I'm going to be using when I talk about the books I'm reading or the books that I really like. This is just a really nice view if you want to use it. So it's very, very, very mutable. You can kind of do a whole bunch of stuff with Calibre. The other thing that Calibre is very useful for is Calibre is basically you can add your books, you can edit the metadata of your books. And what they mean by metadata is basically all of the information and in behind what kind of book it is. So I'll just jump into a book and show you briefly some book metadata. So for example, let's say Judge Dredd. I want to look at the metadata, I go to edit metadata. If you look at some of these things, you can send it to you can send your books to a device, you can save them to a disk, you can convert books, um, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. But let's go to edit metadata. This sheet basically has all the information, has the book. I have my books listed in a series. It lists what series. I don't have comments here, but I totally could have comments. I have a cover right here all the tags and information. One incredibly cool thing that Calibre does is if you don't have a cover or you maybe don't have comments, you can actually 
go out to the web and Calibre will suggest different covers for you. So what will happen is it will go to Amazon, it will go to some open library sites, and it will suggest a cover for you. Obviously I have a cover so I'm not going to use that. The other thing is if you just have the name and information on the book then you can actually go to Calibre and you can even um, download metadata for the book. So if I click this it's basically going to go out onto the web. It's going to look up what kind of metadata is behind that book. And when I say metadata, the whole soup to nuts. It's going to have the publisher. As you can see, it has the summary of the book. Um, so it has all this information. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and take this summary and put it in. So you can do a lot of that stuff with Calibre. Um, I talked about the views. The conversion on Calibre is second to none. There is no format that you cannot convert one format to another. You can convert PDFs, EPUBs. Um, if you have um, DRM-free um, Mobi books, you can convert. If you have DRM-free um, books that are in Amazon's format you can convert you can basically with the right plugins you can convert PDFs to com to comic format you can kind of convert any format that you want you can also use it to uh, um, download news in ebook form you can use it for as you can use it as the software that you use to move your books back and forth off of your own personal e-readers so you could make it so that this is the thing where the your Kindle books go back and forth it won't break the DRM but you'll still be able to move books back and forth you can do that for Kobo you can do that for what I use which is a pocketbook so it's just incredibly robust app and it is amazingly free I've linked the information about Calibre in my description and I would say that if keeping your ebooks organized and storing your ebooks is something that's important to you, then this is definitely an app you should be looking at. So the next app I'm going to show you is Bookshelf. Bookshelf is what I use to track my day-to-day -day reading. It's where I keep track of my goals and kind of the books that are, I'll talk about in another video, but are kind of like in my buffer of books, books that I always want to have on my devices. So if I finish a book or series, I can just jump into another book. So let me go into um, Bookshelf so that you can see what that looks like. Bookshelf is the app. So you go into Bookshelf and the first, the, the, the first screen that or at least the screen where most of the stuff is you're going to be seeing in an overview is the books screen. Now the book screen you can see how many books you currently have added to bookshelf if you have any books in your wish list, um, the books that are in your to read list, what books you're currently reading so for example I'm currently reading The Voyage of Heroes by Tammy Painter. You can also see if you've any books you've abandoned book was you started to read a book but just never finished it um, any books that you've starred um, you can also search based off of um, when you download a book um, it usually will have a category but if you add a category it keeps track of it and you can also look for books in terms of category you can look for books that you've read in terms of author in terms of series if you want to if you add a series so it's pretty robust at least as far as that now let's say that you want to add a book that's pretty cool too because what you would do is just click the plus sign and it you can do it three ways you can add um, the book code the ISBN um, the ISBN and you can do that by just scanning it with your uh, your um, camera you can manually add a book or you can actually just type it in 
let's do devil in a blue dress and search for it you can see it has devil in a blue dress and if I go to devil in a blue dress it gives me different covers I can use gives me information about the book it basically catches all the information you can see it has the description and I can add that book if I want and then that book would go in and all of this information would come over but I'm not since I don't um, I don't believe that book is part of my collection so that's cool and that's very easy to add a book the other part that you can do that's kind of cool is it's set up for a couple different things that you can do and basically I've taken out some of the functional functionality but in the card section you can add cards if you want to quiz yourself you can add notes if you're a person who adds notes in your book and all of this information you can export to um, Excel via CSV you can export it in a whole bunch of different ways and you can also store this information or even mail it to yourself if you want to um, the third tab at the bottom is the stats and this is I'm a stats guy so this is what I love so you can give yourself reading goals and you can see I've given myself a reading goal to read 60 minutes a day I've given myself a reading goal to read 24 books in 2024 kind of gives you a little affirmation if you're where you are if you're behind or if you're ahead of the goal um, kind of talks about trends how many pages have I read from January 20th to January 20 27th you can actually change that so let's just say I want to do it for all time now it's telling me how many pages I've read how many hours I've read what I've read my longest reading streak and you can see I'm reading 39 pages per hour so you might ask yourself how is it getting your pages per hour that's a really cool part but I'll before I go there I do want to show you in the settings in the import and export you can import Goodreads, you can um, import reading lists, story graph, you can export um, your book notes, you can export your cards, and if you're exporting, then you can um, send that as a CSV file, so you, if you want to export that stuff out, that's cool. Uh, my favorite feature of this app, though, is the reading sessions, and let's just say that I'm gonna go ahead and the book I'm currently reading is um, Voyage of Heroes if I press that book you can see they have reading mode and what I can do is I can press reading mode and actually starts to time how long I've been reading I can just do it free form and let it time and then um, finish it when I'm done I can even set a timer that will give me a timer of how long I want to read and when that timer's up, it'll let me know so that I can finish it. Once, let's just say I've read for 20 seconds. Once I've read for 20 seconds, I can click finish. And it'll have me put in my reading time. It'll have me, it'll show me where I last left off. And then it'll also show me where um, I, I, I go ahead and type in the page that I left off at. So I could save that if I wanted to, or I can, which I'm going to do, discard it and if you want to kind of look at what's been going on with your reading sessions then you would just pull up it'll give you a quick view of your stats for that particular book it'll give you information about that book it'll also give you a tab where you can see view reading sessions and you can see when I started reading how many pages I read for the whole time of the book um, generally like I said, since my reading goal is one hour a day, I usually read in short bursts, or before I go to bed, I'll read in one long session. Then you can go uh, back. So I use this. The other nice thing, well, a nice thing and a bad thing. This is on my phone, but there is also a iPad version and the iPad version works on the iPad but it also works 
on your Mac. Now this app is does not have an Android version and this app sadly does not have a PC version. So this is only for Mac users. But I'll just show you real quickly. It's not a huge difference, but I'll show you real quick what that quickly what the app looks like on my Mac. Let me just get out of this reading session. Cool. And let me go ahead and open up this app. So this is what the app looks like when it's on my Mac. And it has pretty much, it's, it's all, it, it, um, whether you have it on your Mac or really any iOS device, um, it uses iCloud to sync across all your devices. So, you know, if I want to, generally when I'm on my um, computer, that's when I'll put in, uh, if I'm going to be adding a bunch of books or something like that, I usually do that from my computer. Um, so you can add it from there. Um, so those are the two apps I use. I've put information in, in the um, description that talks briefly about the apps. Obviously, I'm not being paid by these apps. I just love them and I use them. Um, but I've put some information that talks about the apps. The other cool thing about these apps is, once again, you know I'm a person who loves to own stuff digitally. So with Calibre, it's free. You can donate if you want. And with Bookshelf, they do have a monthly fee and they have an annual fee. But they also give you the option to pay a one-time lifetime fee. Definitely it's more expensive than the monthly and the hourly options. I believe currently it's $64. But to me, that was a cheap price considering I get to have this app and I don't have to worry about, you know, paying it monthly. I don't have to worry about what happens if the author decides they no longer want to support the app. All I have to do is just keep it on my phone and keep using it. So that's pretty much it as far as what I use. Of course, just kind of as a quickie, of course, I have um, Amazon. I have the Kindle app on my computer. I um, also have the Pocketbook app, which is the e-reader I use on my computer. Um, so I keep those apps on my computer. And I will often download an app if it's needed for an ebook store. But because I use Adobe Digital Editions, I just have Adobe Digital Editions on my app. And I'll just, as a matter of fact, I'll show you Adobe Digital Editions um, real quick just so you can kind of see. And Adobe Digital Editions, the reason that I like this app. It's very bare bones, but the best thing about it is that any other service that uses Adobe Digital Editions, when you buy a book using that service, it shows up in this app. And then you can take take it from here and put it on any other device that uses Adobe Digital Editions. So I really like that about Adobe Digital Editions. So I guess that's it. Um, Everybody have a, a, a good day and uh, keep reading.